Women on Wealth is proudly sponsored by First for Women. Celebrating leading women. She fought through the silence and decided that her disability would not define her. This is Women on Wealth and I'm Nozi Pombandra. Tonight we profile South Africa's first deaf chartered accountant, Kashvira Chandrath. We also speak to Liseko Senelo. She is the president of African Women Chartered Accountants about how well women are faring in her industry. And in Power Redefined, we bring you the youngest student to ever enroll at university, this in Zimbabwe. Her name is Mo Chifamba. Kashvira Chandradith was told she would never learn to speak, but she refused to let the fact that she was born deaf determine her professional success. She fought through the adversity to become South Africa's first ever deaf chartered accountant and is now an audit manager at mining giant Anglo-American. I sat down with her to find out why she decided to work in an industry that already had so many barriers that work against women. First of all, I think the greatest battle that I had to overcome in my life was to accept my disability and to recognize that instead of focusing on the disability, rather we focused on the ability. And being in a woman in a almost a male-dominated mining environment, yes, it is a challenge, but it's not impossible. We can do it, and here I am today proving it. Did you always believe that uh, this is the path that you were destined to or do were there any forces in your life that helped you and directed you to where you are today well i think if i had to look at my life and uh, as a whole i think my parents had a very um, important part to play in developing a very holistic character that i have now today but as for my career i always knew i wanted to become a chartered accountant and that was so important to me because i knew in grade 10 that I wanted to be a DA, and in 2004, when I became, when I matriculated, all the national news headlines said that I would become a DA in seven years, and that is precisely what I did. And when I became South Africa's first deaf chartered accountant, it was something that I had never imagined. The journey to where you are today, has it been one that has been uh, littered with challenges, or has it been fairly straightforward? I think it had been a huge roller coaster of emotion, one that had been fraught with many challenges. But at the end of it, I looked at my disability as making it a more positive thing, a, a more of a strength rather than a weakness. And then by making it my strength, I was, over, I was able to overcome many challenges as it would be. Mm. And Kashmira, you've definitely uh, taken uh, full advantage of the platforms that have been afforded uh, to you. Do you consider yourself as a voice representative of other people with all range of disabilities who still want to be sterling professionals in their space? I think I would like to be an ambassador for all people with disabilities, but more importantly for women as a whole. I think um, that being disabled is one thing, but being a woman is more of a challenge right now. And I think that the world and the society have become a little bit more um, relaxed in terms of allowing people to sort of recognize their uniqueness and bring a lot more to the table as it were to be. And you've recently also had a, a, a dose of good news uh, moving up professionally and sitting on a number of boards where you're recognized as a thought leader, uh, uh, you know, highlighting the, the voices of uh, people with disabilities. Let's talk a little bit about what's on your table right now. I think I was very proud, or actually I'm very humbled to be uh, nominated to sit on the executive uh, board of directors for people with physical disabilities in South Africa. And more importantly, that I've managed to create a drive around financial sustainability into our NGOs because I find that we're very passionate about what we do and we are passionate about the human rights 
and we are passionate about the lives of disabled people, but we need to make this sustainable, and therefore we have created a financial sustainability committee that sits within the board mm -hmm. in order to take the NGO forward, and also because we can become financially independent, we can serve our people a lot more better. Mm -hmm. And at the end of the day, that is what it is about. It's about serving our people, and I think that will be more of a a platform for me not only to become more involved in the disabled sector but also to take the learning back into corporate and then maybe we would be a more sensitive corporate in the world of tomorrow. And of course you've recently just come back from Australia uh, from another auditing assignment. Let's talk about that and the absence of uh, female auditors uh, broadly. Those that are in the process of qualifying as chartered accountants, how would you advise them to break into the auditing space? I think nothing is impossible. I think what we need to do is change our attitude, change ourselves, and then the world will change. But if you want to become a DA, really it's hard work. I think it's been reiterated so many times. Mm -hmm. you know, I always say the same thing. Hard work will always pay. And therefore, as a DA, whether you're male or female, you need to just put your 110% behind it. And I'm sure that you will reach a profession where mm -hmm. not only is it financially rewarding, but so rewarding in other aspects. Because you almost become a sort of a benchmark for society as well as someone who can sustain the capital environment. So definitely hard work and do you have any uh, piece of, uh, pieces of advice maybe for younger ladies that uh, not only want to become chartered accountants but they look at you sitting on various boards uh, and driving uh, agendas on, on, on behalf of women. How do you make sure that you don't end up in the lower rungs and you actually ascend to the leadership positions? It's a very interesting thing because I always believe that very often people are trying so hard to be like the next person and forget that they are perhaps the best great version of themselves. But if I had to look at my life as a whole, really, there were two parts of life that appeared before me and I always took the path that was less travelled on and that precisely what made all the difference. Black women continue to be greatly underrepresented when it comes to the accounting profession. Now, according to the South African Institute of Chartered Accountants, under 10% of CAs in South Africa are African women. Earlier, I spoke to Lisek Rostenello. She's the president of African Women Chartered Accountants, and I asked her to break down the numbers and to find out what are the prospects for women CAs in the country. Well, women are still a significantly smaller uh, portion. Um, and if you then break it down to race, uh, the statistics are even more alarming. I think out of just under or just over 40,000 chartered accountants in the country, about 10,000 odd are, Afri are white females, sorry. And the remainder would then be uh, African female, which is the 3,707. Mm. So your African component only makes about 10% of the mm. entire population. Um, and if you had to look at the entire uh, statistics, um, you just over, um, you know, it's about 14,000 out of the entire 40,000 yeah. uh, population that so, is actually So women. the numbers are, are, are quite telling in terms of how the, the landscape of the industry, but what's keeping women out? I think there are many challenges. I think women are, are, are household keepers. Uh, I think um, there's that challenge in terms of financing. Uh, we've seen that as the biggest impediment. And that's not just unique to women, uh, but it, it does play a major role. Uh, and also we face the challenge from a pipeline perspective in terms of uh, maths literacy versus proper maths. And so that eliminates a huge pool of, of the talent that would come through, through through the CA profession. And not just us, by the way, your engineers and your doctors would be looking through uh, mm. to acquire talent from the same pool. So that becomes an imp impediment. And therefore it's, it's, it's critical that uh, financing uh, avenues are created, yeah. more 
bursary fund uh, mechanisms are put in place. Um, and also institutions like UNISA are supported more because they are able to channel uh, more mm -hmm. of the talent speaking that about can't make uh, those, those areas. Speaking about institutions, do you get a sense that enough has been done at an institutional level to make the path of chartered accountancy more attractive for young ladies? I think so. I think it's just a difficult profession uh, by nature. But with determination, with focus, there's nothing that's impossible. Um, once you've determined that that's the route you're going to take, it takes a lot of hard work and focus. But I think the rewards make up for all that pain, you know, that initial pain. Uh, and there are so many options that the CA profession mm. buys one that, you know, I think it's a worthwhile investment for anyone who's able to do it to do so. So when they're in profession and they have qualified as chartered accountants, what kind of challenges do women have to take on um, compared to their male counterparts as they begin to practice their profession? I think there are universal challenges first and foremost. Mm. However, as women, you still face legacy challenges. We live in a very patriotic uh, uh, society, uh, and so you deal with that gender uh, aspect. You deal with the stereotype that says women are not necessarily capable. Uh, and I say we write the same exams. <laughs> we go through the same and training how do we process. What, how do you we know? perform in those exams? I mean, I often hear that women will always outperform men when it comes to some of these academic qualifications. Has this been proven to be true? With the well, I think to some extent, yes. I mean, if we look at the intake that came through SICA this year, uh, just the African component, 60% of that was women. Of over a thousand odd candidates that passed the, the qualifying exam this year, 665 were African women CAs. So that tells that that indeed is, is factual to some degree. Uh, but my point is that we bring a set of skills that are inherent in us, mm. uh, that our male counterparts don't necessarily have. Let's talk about those sets of skills and what value they then bring to mm. uh, any entity. Mm. I think women are generally intuitive, uh, we nurturing. Uh, we tend to be more people-centric, uh, and therefore you also look at more uh, long-term uh, objectives rather than what's the buck. So we're very good candidates for driving your triple bottom line aspect, uh, because in as much as it's business unusual, we actually business usual, we actually do it business unusual, mm. uh, and therefore that way you actually have more diversification. The studies that's been done, even at a World Economic Forum level, that says where boards are diversified and incorporate women as a big component, in the long term those corporates have had more financial rewards. Mm. So that is also telling in terms of having that balance and having those different different viewpoints that then talk to the same objective that each organization is driving forward. Every week we bring you a woman who is flexing her power muscles on the global stage. Let's take a look at the young but formidable Mo Chifamba. This 14-year-old made history when she became the youngest student in Zimbabwe and possibly Southern Africa to enroll at university. The young genius was admitted to the University of Zimbabwe where she has taken on a Bachelor of Accountancy Honours degree. Maud's journey has been nothing short of challenging. An orphan raised in abject poverty, she homeschooled herself, breaking academic records until she was awarded with a four-year scholarship to the value of almost 10,000 US dollars. In 2007, she was named the best student in the Midlands province of Zimbabwe, and later in 2012, she came in fifth on the Forbes Top 100 Youngest Powerful Women in Africa. That's all we have time for for this week's episode of Woman on Wealth. Don't forget to keep talking to us on Twitter. That's by following me at Nozi Pombanjo and using the hashtag WOW14. We want to know who is redefining the concept of power in your world. Until next time, stay empowered.